The following is a production of Learfield Sports. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, an affiliate of Learfield Sports, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited. This legal disclaimer is brought to you by Lanham Blackwell & Baber, proud supporter of the Black Bears. If you have any legal questions, visit them at LanhamBlackwell.com. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Black Bear Insider. I'm your host, Brian Sullivan, and we've got a great show on tap for you this week. We've got a big announcement from the Maine men's hockey team regarding their fundraising moving forward. Plus, the America East Cross Country Championships, they'll be right here in Orno this November. We'll talk with Mark Leck about his newly designed course for both the men's and women's runners. Plus, we'll simulate some in-game action with a field hockey team. Goalkeeper Emily Corbett straps on a GoPro and shows us what it's like trying to block shots. Plus, Maine men's hockey coach Red Gendron, he breaks it all down for family, friends of the Black Bear team in Hockey 101. We'll speak with Athletic Director Carlton Creech, the big man on campus, in another edition of Carlton's Corner. And of course, a look at the U.S. Cellular upcoming schedule. This is the Black Bear Insider. Black Bear Insider is brought to you by Lanham, Blackwell & Baber, U.S. Cellular, UMaine Recreation and Fitness Center, Fisher Plows, Maine Savings Federal Credit Union, EBS Building Supplies, and Digital Workshop. So with U.S. Cellular, you get four lines and 10 gigs for 140 a month. And you can upgrade your phone every year. Say upgrade. Upgrade. U.S. Cellular lets you upgrade every year? Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Just sign this. This is how I sign up? I don't make the rules, Mr. Westbrook. At U.S. Cellular, get four lines with 10 gigs for just $140 a month and upgrade your phone every year. U.S. Cellular, hello better. Under the bright lights of your playing field, one performer continues to shine. The Fisher Extreme V. With durable X-Bracing, the Extreme V carries the load. With precision passes, the power to bust through, the maximum protection of the Fisher Trip Edge, and the brightest lights available. Fisher, your business, our passion. Learn more at vplowfacts.com. Well, let me begin by thanking everyone who is here today to help us celebrate a transformational gift to the University of Maine. I'm honored to announce the Tom and Sally Savage of Searsport, Maine, have generously committed $1 million to establish the Savage Challenge, an operating endowment in support of our men's ice hockey program. What the gift's gonna do is it's gonna trigger a five-year campaign uh, to match the $1 million um, for our playing and coaching alumni. So we're gonna be out there um, working hard to make sure Tom and Sally's gift is matched by our alumni and have an overall um, fundraising campaign to build our hockey endowment. Now, how does something like this come together? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, first of all, it's the generosity of folks like Tom and Sally Savage. I mean, if you don't have the people that are uh, capable of making a gift like that and willing to make a gift like that and care enough about the institution to do it, mm -hmm. you're never going to get a gift. But I think having a, a vision for our programs long term is a critical piece of it all. The quality of the Maine hockey experience is the finest in the country. And it is so because we are family, always have been, always will be. Our administration, our fans, the members of the Friends of Maine Hockey, our students, the local community, all the citizens of Maine, and of course our donors work together to make Maine Hockey both unique and exceptional. What does a gift like this mean for a school like University of Maine at a time like this? Well, you know, this is, this is the reality nowadays. Uh, you know, state funding continues to go down, and that's across the country. So when we look at athletics, and Division I athletics in particular, which are uh, very expensive to run for all of our programs, 
how do we, how do we you know, ensure that we're going to have financial stability? Building endowment is, uh, is a very common goal across the country. The University of Texas is looking at endowing all of their athletic scholarships, for example, with the largest athletic budget in the country. So uh, we need to build that endowment up so that we have those funds in perpetuity for our programs versus uh, you know, struggling to find day-to-day -day operational funds mm -hmm. through fundraising and budgeting and other, other methods. And now I'd like to read the words that Tom submitted uh, as his statement on behalf of, of the Savage family. Like thousands of other Mainers, Maine hockey holds a special place in my heart. I will never forget how proud we were when we drove over the bridge in Kittery and saw the 1993 national champion sign over 20 years ago. And I still get excited when Alfond Arena is shaking after a big main goal. For many of us, this program provides a great sense of pride, knowing that Maine can compete for championships on a national stage. When Sally and I discussed making this gift, we agreed it was a meaningful and worthy endeavor. Our goal is to help the University of Maine provide the best experience possible for the student athletes, help our coaches put a product on the ice that Mainers can be proud of, and put the Maine Black Bears in the best position possible to compete for championships. We're excited to play a role in ensuring that Maine hockey is financially strong for years to come and hope others will join us in this effort. Well, I've, I've been a hockey fan ever since it started. Watched the program, enjoyed the program, and enjoyed my relationship with the university. And as you, as you see things changing over the world of hockey and college sports, you see that there's a need for more money, endowments. And that's why I decided to do it, is to help this hockey program. I've seen how much it's given to, not only the university, but the state of Maine and the pride we all take in it. And I'm hopeful other people will join me and uh, just support our programs. And I'm happy to be able to do that. And explain to the people uh, watching out there a little bit about Tom and Sally Savage and uh, who they are and why to, make a, to give a gift like this. You know, I, they're very special people. And, and I would say that with or without a million dollars for University of Maine. I, gotten uh, very fortunate to get very close to Tom here the last couple of years and in my in my mind working uh, in development for 12 plus years here they're the perfect donor um, they love this institution um, they really care about doing what's right to make it better for the long haul and they're doing it for all the right reasons I know Tom is he's one of the guys if you if you come here and see a hockey game with Tom Savage what you'll see is Tom walking around the rink and talking to every person he loves this town he loves this hockey team he loves this state and that's just uh, I'm really lucky to work with people like that. Okay, well, Seth, thank you very much for Thanks, your guys. time. Uh, a great day for the University of Maine. A big endowment coming to help the program moving forward. Now we're going to hear from one of the men who helped make that happen, Carlton Creech, in another edition of Carlton's Corner. I'm so proud of our new academic center for our student athletes. One of my main goals here, and our goals as the athletic department, is to keep the student athlete experience at the center of everything we do and the new academic support center does that like uh, no other facility that I've seen in our conference. It's a game changer for us in supporting our student athletes, the ability to recruit the best student athletes to our campus and serve them with their academic needs while they're here. It's a great facility with computer stalls, study areas, uh, tutoring rooms and office space for our counselors. The student athletes can handle all of their academic needs there. We've got four full-time staff available to counsel them and help them through their academic careers. We've also got uh, designated computer areas where they can do, an, do all their work uh, right there in the lab. We've got quiet study areas, work tables, big tutor rooms, small tutor rooms. It's just a fantastic facility uh, that's one of the best at our level in Division I. The student athlete academic experience is why we're here. We're students first, athletes second, and this really sends a clear message to our students that we value them and value the quality of their educational experience here at the University of Maine. You support your black bears at the game. Now you can support them everywhere you go. Introducing the exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Maine Savings. The Black Bear Debit Card is free to you and supports the Black Bear Fund each time you use your card for a purchase. Just open a red wallet account at Maine Savings. Stop into our new College Avenue branch or any of our other convenient branches. Show your pride. Make a difference. The exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Maine Savings. EBS Building Supplies knows time is the most valuable resource you have. That's why they offer free delivery anywhere in their service area. Fast, convenient, and free. That's the EBS way. So whether you're a professional contractor or a do-it-yourself homeowner, no delivery is too small or too big. And custom ordering is always available. 
Use EBS free delivery to make your life easier and your home improvement project complete faster. EBS Building Supplies. Can do. Just ask. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, joined by Katie Massey, a senior forward for the Maine women's hockey team. Katie, a former Waterville Purple Panther, but she always wanted to wear the blue and white. Explain to people out there watching uh, a little of your backstory. Uh, yeah, I, um, I came from Waterville. I played on the boys' uh, varsity team all four years. And just growing up, I just looking forward to Maine, I, I really knew that's where I wanted to play. I'd been looking at other schools, but for some reason it really didn't mean as much to me to go to another school. Sure. It seemed like it was an easier route to try and play in another school. And I knew this would be a challenge, but I, I really wanted to take it on and I knew like I wouldn't have any regrets if I really pursued it. Now four years ago you get up here as a freshman, take me through the process of walking on. Yeah, um, Coach Lewis, the former coach here, called me about a month before um, school was starting. And I met with her, had a little bit of an interview, I would call it. Um, and then she offered me a two-week tryout period um, where I went through a week of the physical testing with the team, um, just, you know, standard bench press, squat, just things like that. Um, and then on the ice we had practices, and then I had, um, like, a retreat with the team. So I think it was, they were really looking at all kinds of different aspects of, you know, my attitude and my work ethic and, how I was coming in physically, so it's, it's fun. <laughs> now, since that time walking on, and, and now, you haven't missed a game. Uh, you've played in more games than anyone on the roster currently. Uh, I mean, to talk to me a little, that, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, I take a lot of pride in that. Sure. It's, uh, I mean, it's hard even just to miss a practice, so every game, I know, it's just a huge opportunity. And there's really, even, I'm coming to my senior year, so there's not many left, so I'm really happy that I had the chance to play in all those games. And uh, really that the coaches wanted me in the lineup for all those games and I feel like I'm you know, I'm a big part of the team, a good role player. Now a streak like you've been on, balancing uh, a, the student part of it with the athlete part of it, uh, academics has been very important to you. In fact, uh, you're among the best. Explain to people what you've, what you've achieved over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, I've had um, a strong GPA. Over the <laughs> strong GPA? Yeah. Four point is pretty strong. Yeah, um, over my three years and I was um, awarded the top scholar athlete um, for the past three years which goes to the highest GPA for the Hockey East Conference. Now what does that mean to you? Um, it means a lot. I mean I think it just it just shows that you know athletes can do really well in the classroom and our team um, I'm pretty sure one had the most scholars out of Hockey East so it really sets the standard for our team and shows what we're about. Now as you look down the schedule a little bit with the big games to lie ahead, how do you think your team stacks up? Got a chance this year? Oh, definitely. Um, I think we, we're a very strong defensive team. Um, so against those really high top-ranked offensive teams, we're going to do very well. Uh, I think our key would definitely be to capitalize on our chances that we get uh, against those very strong teams. No, did you and your teammates lay out goals for yourselves or individual or as a team before the season began? Yeah, um, we have like a mental training coach and everything, so we do individual type things. And I guess as, um, as a team goal, we haven't had anything super concrete, but we just look at things one game at a time. Mm -hmm. and that type of thing. That's all you can do. Yeah. Just play the game that lies ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, Katie, thank you very much for your time. We're now going to speak with Emily Corbett, a goalkeeper for the field hockey team here in Orno. We put on a GoPro and we tried to simulate some in-game action. Take a look. I really have to be aware of my um, environment, if where they are, um, how their body is, and where the ball is placement. Sometimes I can intercept before they can. Uh, sometimes I can clear it with my feet, um, and other times I have to use my footwork and kind of uh, do a little one-on-one -on -one with them and try and clear the ball. <laughs> on one-on-ones, um, it's it's some goalies' techniques to come out and slide and it works well for me. Um, I see that their head's down and uh, they can't see me, so I come and slide and I clear the ball without them there. My footwork and kicking, um, I think it it's very important with goalkeeping and I've really tried hard to um, keep on improving those areas. Uh, it's really important with it. Um, 
in every aspect of, of the game. Do footwork at home, do everything you can at home, and then uh, come to the field ready and prepared to play. Uh, bring intensity, it always helps. I try and organize my defense first so um, I know they're set to make the uh, right plays and then I can organize myself. Um, I evaluate the situation, uh, who's around me and in what position they are, if they're in a tipping position receiving, and I uh, play to that. Uh, my favorite actor is uh, Denzel Washington. My favorite actress is Scarlett Johansson. Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm Denzel Washington. I'm going to go Gerard Butler. He's the man. Uh, Jennifer Aniston. I absolutely love her. She's in like everything I watch. Not really. No, is that OK? <laughs> Pretty much any actor that I can't recognize in between movies, like Hugh Jackman or Meryl Streep, are really good actors to me. My favorite actress. Um, probably Megan Fox and my favorite actor, favorite actor is Mark Wahlberg. Ed Westwick and uh, Leighton Meester, they're the main characters of Gossip Girl and that's like my guilty pleasure. Hey Black Bear fans, if you would like to have your questions answered by a Black Bear athlete, simply post or tweet using the hashtag AskABlackBear for a chance to have your questions answered on the show. <laughs> No matter what your game is, indoors or out, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center at the University of Maine is your place to play, work out, relax, and have fun. The Rec Center has state-of-the-art cardio and weight training equipment, a pool, spa, and sauna, a running track, and more than 60 fitness classes a week. Or take your game outside with the Maine Bound Adventure Center. Hit the climbing or bouldering wall. Learn how to kayak, go rock climbing. Whatever game you like, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center is your place to play. Hey, man, I'm stranded. You think you can come pick me up? Uh, where you at? Uh, Route 13, 50 miles out. I'm kind of busy right now. It's going to be a little bit. Awesome. Why was U.S. Cellular built to work way out here? Because being stuck in the middle of nowhere should be up to your buddy, not your spotty wireless provider. With 4G LTE coverage, for nearly 90% of our customers, you get national coverage that works harder locally. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. So uh, I guess explain to me what's going on here. We've got the American East Championships coming up here this year, and you decided to you needed to redesign the course. Yeah, um, uh, there's two kinds of courses. There's uh, an aesthetic course, which the athletes like, 
uh, but there's the spectator course, which the spectators like. So depends upon what you want it to be. Uh, something like this, where you're going to have a lot of people coming up from different parts uh, of the uh, area, then um, you want to have something at least where the people are going to be able to see it more than at the start and the finish line. Yeah, so, you were saying in the past, you're going to have parents come up and visit, and they'd see their children for the first half mile, and they go into the woods, and they wouldn't see them again. Yeah, yeah, and it's okay to stand around and wait for them, and then, you know, they can't see anything unfolding in the race. Uh, so uh, I decided to um, be able to make it a little more spectator-friendly. Uh, so somebody drives up from UMBC and, uh, you know, 10 hours, they can see more than just a little bit of the, the race. So was this kind of a trial and error uh, process for you? Yeah. You out and run and, okay, that worked, that didn't work? Basically, I was out here all summer with a measuring wheel, measuring all the parts that I thought, because I have to get it at least close to the uh, amount that we need it to be. Now, obviously, I mean, if you're on a course like this, you can run outside, you run inside, and so you try and, um, like cut the tangents and uh, measure it for uh, the inside and where you think the athletes are going to um, pick to run because you know, they want to run the shortest part uh, so you want to measure it to be that shortest part of the course so uh, yeah I had to measure each kind of segment back and forth and uh, yeah, it took a good few weeks of uh, exercise with the measuring wheel. What are the differences between the men's and the women's courses? Basically, the first three miles of the course are the same. Um, and then at that third mile, the guys will go on and do the fourth and fifth mile of the course. And then the ladies will go to the finish line. <laughs> How do you think this compares or rates against other courses that you, uh, that you run at in the American East? Well, I think people will like it for the variety. Uh, it's a fairly fast course, but it's challenging because there's a lot of switches around uh, and turns, and you never really get to get into a rhythm so much. Um, you're always having to work at it, type of thing. Uh, yeah, it's so this there. suggested uh, the, the different, what you're, what you're running on, you know what I mean? You go yeah. from wide open to track to come around here, so. Well, that, that's the way cross country was first right. started sure. back in England. Uh, yeah, okay, where are you running? Well, we're running cross country. Okay, we're running from uh, wherever Ta Donegal Township, township to, uh, you know, East Greenwich. Okay, how far is it? Doesn't matter. You, you run to there, and uh, if you have a stream, you run over it. If you have a hill, you run over it. If you have a, you know anything, then you're going to go. September is in the books. We're fully into October and some big games lie ahead for many Black Bear teams. With that in mind, we'll now take a look at the U.S. Cellular upcoming schedule. For years, Black Bear fans have been coming here to Alphond Arena to watch their favorite team play. Well, head coach Red Gendron, he gave those fans an inside look in Hockey 101, breaking it all down. And one of the great strengths of our program is that we're a family, okay? And we act like that and we operate like that as often as we possibly can and we try to do it every single day.
Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of the Black Bear Insider. Thank you very much for joining us. If you want more information on your favorite athletes or teams, make sure to go to goblackbears.com. They've got anything you could need. Until next time, we will say, Go Black Bears!